hello students here i am with my second lesson uh, today i am going to teach you um, that is a control of separately excited or shunt dc motor using controlled half wave converter so this is circuit of the controlled half wave converter here is a ac supply yeah, as you can see it can be fed through a single phase transformer here uh, the transformer is not shown but uh, it has been depicted as an ac source this is a thyristor the the control switch and uh, in the full wave converter you have seen that we had used four thyristors but here in case of half wave converter control half wave converter we are using single thyristor there is this freewheeling diode what is its purpose i will explain it to you later and this is the rle load which depicts the actually the dc machine i told you uh, last day also that is the dc machine can be uh, can be depicted by an rle load and this is my output current this is my supply current this is my supply voltage and this is my output voltage and this e here represents the back emf developed in the machine and this r and l are the resistance and the inductance of the motor windings so uh, this uh, so this is a circuit diagram as i have explained to you and now let us come to the most important part that is the waveforms so uh, as you can see this is the supply voltage the pure ac sinusoidal voltage this is the alpha alpha is our triggering angle we will be triggering this thyristor t at e, at every uh, cycle at alpha is a half wave converter that is why we will not be triggering this thyristor in both the half cycles we will be triggering it in the positive half cycle and next we will be triggering it in the positive half cycles of the next time period right so this is my time period is my time period t so this is my output voltage waveform we can see that uh, as we trigger this uh, thyristor t at alpha the see when the thyristor t is triggered so this becomes uh, short circuited so the input and the output wave so this so this point supposing we name this point as p and supposing we name this point as Q, so these two points become the same, short circuited, shorted. So basically, the out input voltage waveform comes across the output voltage waveform. So as we have triggered at alpha, so after that, see the output voltage waveform follows the input voltage waveform. Now, now, uh, because of this high inductance in the output circuit, this inductance is much much. That is, L is very very greater than R because of this high inductance in the output circuit this output voltage waveform should have gone negative should have gone negative that is uh, the output voltage waveform should have followed this right as we have explained uh, in the last video that because of the output voltage waveform the we can see the output current conducts beyond beyond pi also and because of this this output voltage wave waveform should have become negative beyond pi but it didn't become negative and it stopped at zero it is because of this freewheeling diode we'll come to it later just a few minutes a uh, few uh, minutes later so uh, the output voltage here is from alpha to pi we can see after that in the negative half cycle there is no triggering and again at 2 pi plus alpha we again trigger this thyristor t and it again conducts for alpha to pi so this conduction time is pi minus alpha the next is the output current waveform so we can see because uh, see as we trigger this uh, thyristor mm -hmm, so this supply from the ac supply this current is flows the freewheeling diode uh, does not flow as we trigger this thyristor at alpha this is flows through i0 and it follows this path okay it follows this path so it follows and it charges the output um, uh, that is this l right it charges up and at certain instant the current again starts falling it's falling because it starts falling as the polarity of this inductor supposing uh, uh, means when it starts charging its polarity is plus minus and when it's and when this current decays the current starts to decay when the polarity of this inductor 
becomes negative that is this becomes uh, that is this polarity then becomes minus and this polarity then becomes plus that is it inverts the polarity then this current starts discharging now as it starts to discharge now see there is only one thyristor so the current start discharging now the direction of the current can only be this as this is a unidirectional uh, device so the direction of current cannot change the polarity of the inductor changes so current still conducting in this direction so what happens so this output voltage uh, now should have followed the input voltage continuously but what happens at the value of pi as the input becomes negative all right so this thyristor becomes reverse bias but as the polarity of the inductor is reversed so therefore what happens this this forward bias is this free willing diode now as this free willing diode is forward bias so now the output current is continues to flow in this path right. this is the main mechanism so the current charges up and uh, so the in um, so the current rises up and then again decays till 2 pi plus alpha and then again starts uh, rising as and when this thyristor T is triggered. But uh, this such a long value of the decaying period is uh, is a bit is a bit abnormal as uh, but but we had to show this operation in the continuous conduction mode and therefore I had shown that this current does not become uh, discontinuous. So this is my I0 and this is my I average. I have considered it to be a constant, uh, constant DC current. Now this is a free willing diode. Now this free willing diode starts conducting from pi, from pi till, from pi means as the voltage becomes negative. I told you previously as the voltage becomes negative, so this thyristor gets reverse biased. But but as the polarity of this inductor has already changed, uh, so this becomes forward biased and here at uh, pi this is negative, so this also, um, so this becomes reverse biased, this is positive, so this becomes forward biased at that time and this free willing diode starts conducting from pi, so we can see this is I, IFWD, from pi it has started to conduct and will conduct till the thyristor T is again triggered. Now if it was discontinuous conduction, um, uh, discontinuous conduction mode then this, uh, this free willing current could have decayed to zero at any instant between 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 pi and uh, this 2 pi plus alpha but because we have considered continuous conduction mode and therefore I had shown this to be continuous current. Uh, this is only the free willing diode which is a free willing diode current which is just a portion of this I0. Now this is cancelled right and this is the supply that is the uh, see from I0 if you if you if you if you separate this IFD, IFWD what is left is IS that is the supply current there is a current passing through the IS this much of current flows from alpha to pi that is when this this supply is supplying power to the load that is from alpha to pi beyond pi what happens it is that energy stored in this inductor that is uh, supplying this current that is dissipated in this in this closed circuit that is in this resistor it will be dissipated and uh, it will be dissipated gradually and the current gradually decays and falls to gradually decays so this is the supply current now let us come to this uh, now this is the average voltage from the waveform it is quite understandable that is the v0 uh, that is the output voltage is 1 by 2 pi alpha 2 pi vm sin omega t as we have discussed earlier also so this is the known result you must know this but now as uh, from here we can see for any value of alpha between 0 to 180 the output voltage does not go negative so therefore it's a first quadrant operation is only possible in this kind of in half wave converter unlike in full wave converter where two quadrant operation is possible so uh, the function of the free willing diode the free willing diode helps to keep the input power factor better and to keep the load current continuous so for the load current to be continuous um, the the free willing diode has a role so without the free willing diode there is a high probability that the that during the 
that uh, that beyond pi the current will decay to zero that will be a discontinuous conduction mode now uh, the entire calculation is very much this is a very much known result the uh, the result for speed uh, speed and i have uh, just replacing ia by t by k phi i have drawn a relation between speed and torque and here i had to, i have to replace this value of v0 which you, uh, which you have derived here v0 is vm by 2 pi 1 plus cos alpha so we have put here so this is my speed torque relation this is my no load uh, speed at various value of alpha so with different values of alpha with the variation of t we get the speed versus torque characteristic and this is the nature of the speed versus torque characteristic we see for first for for alpha is equals to 0 alpha is equal to 30 alpha is equal to 90 we get different curves and uh, this is for alpha is equals to 180 we get at no load so at alpha is equal to 180 what happens see this is torque is 0 so this uh, term is cancelled and uh, v0 v0 at alpha is equal to 180 becomes 0 see for alpha is equal to 180 this becomes minus 1 so 1 minus 1 is 0 so, so v0 becomes 0 so at alpha is equal to 180 the no load speed becomes 0 and it gradually decays to the negative value so with increasing the torque so this is the motoring region and this is the reverse regenerative braking region as we know there is the first quadrant offers the forward motoring region and the fourth quadrant the reverse uh, braking region so this is the reverse regenerative braking region okay so this completes our analysis of the of the control of uh, separately accelerated dc shunt motor dc motor using controlled half wave converter the important points here is the circuit diagram the waveforms the deduction of this uh, output voltage the quadrant operation function of the free wheeling diode and this deduction this is relation and this ultimately the, what is our main intention is to derive the speed system okay, thank you